Before we can train our Autolytics computer vision models, we need a data set first of all. So this video here, we're going to talk about data collection and also different annotation strategies for generating a computer vision data set. Once you have the data set with the labels, we can just import them with Autolytics, specify what data set we want to use, train our model with a single line. We just need to specify the different parameters and we will get a fine tuned computer vision model on our own custom data set. Then we can run validation, inference, export it. We can do whatever we want with the model in Autolytics in just a few commands after we have trained our model. But the most important thing here, let's just jump straight into the documentation, go through some of these different data collection and annotation strategies. So we know when to use what, how we're going to do annotations in the correct format so we can train our Autolytics models. Because once we have the data, it's only a few clicks, few commands, spin up a Google Colab notebook, run a few blocks of code, and we have a fine-tuned computer vision model. So if you go inside the guides tab, we've covered most of the guides here in YouTube videos here, so check them out on the channel. We have Google Colab notebooks on the Autolytics GitHub repository. You can check out, go through them step-by-step. Step. Everything is documented in a very simple way. So if you go down here at the bottom, we can see we have data collection and annotation. First of all, when we create a computer vision project, as I mentioned, the data is the most important thing, like get good data, label it, train your model, do data set iterations. It's not enough to just go in, change a few high parameters here and there and expect that we get a better model. If you're not getting good results, pretty much with the default parameters out of the box with Autolytics, it's most likely in your data set. And this is where you should focus most of the time because once we have a good data set, we can train it just single command or a few lines of code. Trash in is also trash out for computer vision models, but also just any AI model, machine learning model method in general. So first of all, we need to set up our classes and collect data. We need to collect the raw images, a very good way to do it. And I like to do it as well is just capture videos. Then you can go in and sample images from those videos could be in a fixed interval, could be that you have a video with timestamps or alert times and then you want to sample images around those could be that you get two hours of videos 20 hours of videos i've gotten that before then you get timestamp that says okay we have an event here that we want to detect with our computer vision model at second minute in the video then you can create a simple script you can just use any llm to set up that script at these timestamps it should go in and sample 30 frames per second, or how many frames that you want, depending on the use case. So you collect the data, then we need to choose the right classes for the project. Could be that you want to just use a base model with car detection, trucks, bosses, person, if you just want to do some basic counting system or get something up and running. Could be an industrial use case where you have things running on a conveyor belt, you want to do some manual inspection and so on. Then it might be bottles that we want to detect. So we need to figure out what classes do we want to detect and what do we want to use it for in the business logic that we're trying to solve, collect our data, and then we need to set up our annotation pipeline or start annotating our data so we can get a ground truth data set to train our Autolytics models on. So for example, here could be that we want to just have a core class count. So vehicle, non-vehicle is like a very binary class. Could even be fine class count as well. So we could separate into sedan, SUV, pickup truck, motorcycle, and so on, as you can see here. So it really depends. It really depends on your application and what you're trying to solve. Could be that you want to take fruits, vegetables. Is it good enough for just those two classes? Or do we want to act like separate them into subclasses as well? You can do that directly with the model. It will require a lot more data to be able to go into subclasses and get really good performance with that. Another way is to just get the predictions of fruits and then have another classifier or some other way to identify which specific fruit is it is. It can even be combined with classical computer vision methods. Let's say that you basically just want to have apples and oranges. Maybe your oranges are orange, your apples are green or red. That's a pretty easy classical computer vision method to just separate those two out once you have the cutout of the actual like objects. So we need to generate our data. We need to choose the right classes. The right classes act like comes before 
generating our data set, our raw images, because if we don't know exactly what we want to detect and use our computer vision model for, we can really start the data generation. So these are the most important things to start with. Here are some source of data. So you can use Kaggle, Google data sets, here at Autolytics, inside the solutions tab, we have tons of data sets or inside the data set tab at the top, we have tons of data sets that you can use out of the box, both for segmentation, post estimation, updatation, classification, and so on. You can just specify the file. It's automatically going to download the data set. Another very important thing here is to avoid bias in your data collection. So we need diverse sources. We need a balanced representation of the objects that we want to detect. Continuous monitoring, bias migration techniques, and all that. We went over all of those things in details in other videos, so make sure to check that out. Data is a very important part of the computer vision pipeline. But continuous monitoring, like just identify and see if your model is performing good. Is your data set covering enough variation in your data? Let's say that you're training. Let's say that you're training on one specific example. You sit in your room, you detect cops or whatever. I think I have like a very cool data set for for that. But let's see to say that you want to detect something in your home, you detect different objects. Then if you go into another home or in another environment, your model might not perform as good. And in most cases, it will not perform as good if even perform at all. So it's very important to have variation in your data, different lighting conditions, different angles of the object that you want to detect. So this is basically just diverse sources, a balanced representation as well to represent the same objects in different ways, because then the models will be able to generalize way better. This is the hardest part in computer vision and also update detection and so on as well, is just to get our models to generalize so well that it can perform in any environment, even if there are slight changes. Some environments might be very fixed in industrial use cases, but there could still be some bias in there that we need to take into account. So what is data annotation? Now we have our data, we have our classes, we already know the business problem that we're trying to solve. Then we need to actually like go in, get our data set with annotation so we can train the models. So these are different types. So we have bounding boxes, polygons, a so bounding box is just for traditional update detection. We get a bounding box, so these rectangles that you have probably seen everywhere. There's polygons, this is more for instant segmentation. So this is just individual points around an object that defines a mask. This is used for instant segmentation. Really useful if you need the size of an object, if you want the pixel mask to do some additional calculations or whatever, we will still get the bounding box around the mask. But if you just use traditional 2D bounding boxes, updatation, we will not really get just the individual pixels of that object that we're trying to detect but we get a lot of noise around the bounding boxes. So for example, the hot air balloon here that we're seeing in the image, we see we have a lot of the sky and the air here at the bottom around our bounding boxes. If we just had the annotation or the polygons, it will just perfectly fit around the boundaries of our objects. So we have the binary mask here. So for example, that could be, if you just want to detect background foreground, that could be a binary mask that's used in semantic segmentation. So that's more if you want to classify every single pixel in the whole frame into a separate class. Foreground, background could be uh, cars, vehicles, road, air. That could be three classes in the semantic segmentation. So we're just trying to segment out the whole image. Instant segmentation is focusing on the polygons, just individual objects in our frames. Key points, so that is for post estimation, could be key points in your arm. So the different joints that you have in your arm could be a key point. And then we can train the Autolytics post estimation models. So for the Autolytics format, we have the index, and then we have all the normalized coordinates, depending on if you're using bounding boxes, polygons, post, post estimation with the key points. So that's just the same TST file. It's just whatever key points that we have or our act like object coordinates will be different. So the Cocos format, very, very common as well. We have the Pascal VUC, panoptic segmentation. That's basically just on the images directly. So that will just be a color value representing it in our image. So here are some techniques of annotation. We also have other videos where we go over the step by step, how we can do annotation of our data set first, 
how can we get it into Autodelix, train the model and also use the model after. So definitely make sure to check that out. We have Label Studio, CVAT, Label Me, Label Him, and these are the tools that we have used in those videos. So definitely check those out. It's just some very basic programs, very simple to get started with. You choose if you want to use Polygon Zone, Bounding Box, and then you draw it with the mouse. You specify the specific label or class that you want to assign to this annotation that you have just done. So here we can go down and take a look at some more things to consider. So we want to improve our accuracy, precision, outliers, the quality of our data. We want to have as much variation as possible. So we want to identify outliers, could cause some harm to our, pro to our problem that we're trying to solve, could even help it as well. So just have more edge cases. If you just train it on a general data set, we try to deploy it, we run it in production, we see, okay, our model is not performing good, we might find edge cases and so on. Try to get those edge cases into the model training and data set as well, just to be able to generalize better. I feel like when we're working with computer vision, all of it is basically just about making our models generalize better and still keep very high accuracy on the models. This is a very hard problem to, to solve, and most of it is act like in the data. So we can detect different outliers, numerical values with pixel values, bounding box coordinates. Maybe you don't expect the bounding boxes or coordinates to be in specific regions of your image as well, depending on your use case, visual techniques. Just look at it as well. Like one of the best validation metrics that I'm using or tools that I'm using is simply just my eyes. How good is the model performing? Can we use this information to run some tracking do the count that we want to do or the additional business logic uh, that we need to apply for this project that we're doing. So these are some really, really important things to take into account. Labeling is the most important thing of it, like get really good data, make sure that you have clear annotation guidelines. If you're multiple people working on the same annotations, make sure you annotate in the same way. Let's say that you have occlusions like cars driving around you might have two cars how are we labeling a car occluded by another car are we overlapping the bounding boxes are we only annotating the visual part of it so we need to have these clear annotation guidelines so we don't mix up our labels because that will only confuse the models regular quality checks use pre-annotation tools there's even also auto annotation tools out there so you just prompt it what objects do you want to label it's going to do that with some base model, for example, the YOLO V model, the YOLO world models. They're also available from Autolytics. We also have an auto annotation tool that you can check out. Batch processing, implement active learning. So we have this loop here where we just iterate with our data set and it becomes better over time. All these thoughts here, strategies for data collection and annotations are very important. Like any computer vision engineer out there should know these, know them in a very deep level and also how every single thing of these aspects and strategies affect the training, the model, the results when you put them out there into the real world. Hope you learned on this video here. Definitely go through it again. Go through the documentation. Make sure that you understand all these things going into the data set because this is what's going into the models. Hope you learned on. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.